Kristen, this is Fabio, and this is our dog Yoda. After years of research, planning, and hard work, the adventure is beginning. We're leaving Fort Lauderdale for the Bahamas. Crystal clear water and varying shades of blue, white sand beaches, days spent snorkeling with sharks and stingrays. Join us as we finally arrive in this stunning natural playground and begin our next act as liveaboard cruisers. Our sailing grounds this week are the beautiful waters between Bimini and the Exumas. From Gunkey just south of Bimini to Chub Key, then Chub to West Bay, West Bay to Shroud Key, and Shroud to Cambridge Key. We departed at about 7 a.m. from Gun Key for the 88 nautical mile trip to Chub Key at the southern end of the Berry Islands. We chose to go around Bimini instead of cutting straight across from Gun Key because the water was a bit deeper. The waters over the Bahama banks were quite choppy, but we maintained a speed of 10 knots, arriving at the Chub Key Channel around 6 p.m. with plenty of light. The two poles sticking out of the water at a haphazard angle indicate the channel entrance. We made our way through and set anchor in eight foot of water just outside the channel next to a 45 foot outremer. Maybe, yeah. Probably. Yeah, so in six feet of water, 40 feet of chain would be out. Yeah. How's the bridle? Huh? How's the bridle? It's great. Good. The phone we need is a piece of, is a sick tie. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Right. Chub Key is a private island located next to the pocket and the tongue of the ocean and has been coined the billfish capital of the Bahamas. It's renowned for sport fishing and diving. to Chub Key a little while ago and now we're making some dinner and we're gonna celebrate with a little champagne from our friends Sam and Sydney Lyles. Thanks so much guys. All right, got it open. Recently bottles have been kind of exploding on me. Mm -hmm. Broke out the special glasses. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you guys. Nice. All right. 
Right now we're headed to the Chub Key Club um, because we found out that we can do our COVID test there. Um, when you come to the Bahamas, if you're staying longer than five days, you have to do a COVID test within five days. And there's certain places in the islands that you can do it. Morning. Hi. <laughs> and so we were gonna head to Nassau, but then we read that it's high crime. And so we really wanted to avoid heading into Nassau itself. And we're gonna anchor in West End, um, but there's no testing sites over there. So we found out that you can get a day pass to the Chub Key Clubhouse, I guess, or the Chub Key Resort and it's $44 and then you can get a COVID test here and the test I think is $25 a person so that was worth it to us to be able to you know have the convenience of getting the test in a safe place and not have to worry about not being compliant plus wi-fi plus oh yeah free open wi-fi that we can get from the boat which is amazing and actually the speed is quite good We just had our COVID test here at the clinic. Super easy, took like all of 10 minutes. The nurse was really nice and totally pain free. So this is a great stop if you guys need to do your five day test while and you're free. here. Yeah, actually it's included with the uh, Bahamas travel permit. So no additional cost. So it was really just the cost $44 for the day pass for Chub Key Clubhouse. And it's a beautiful spot. So we're super pleased that we've done this. <laughs> So, Fab, you want to tell us why we're using Parmalat? Oh, Parmalat. I grew up with it in Italy, but uh, here on the boat, the fridge doesn't work. So, <laughs> <laughs> milk doesn't last very long, and this lasts a long time. So, It's we, great to have on board. Great to have on board Parmalat. But, uh, yeah, our fridges are really... Yeah, the inside one is at like 52, and then the outside one is at 58. <laughs> yeah, another great fridge. And what is this gem here? Oh, okay, yeah. <clears throat> so these are eggplants that are marinated, like to do in uh, Sicily, Calabria. Basically, 48 hours in, uh, in a brine and uh, vinegar. Then you squeeze the vinegar out, and you put them in a, um, in a jar under oil with garlic and hot peppers and and some oregano it's really nice and then i i actually boiled it so i can keep it outside for six weeks before they're ready to be eaten all right nice wake up i can smell the smoke from the bacon let's go see the sun shining from the windows Okay, I know that today will be a good day. Okay, I know that today will be a good 
We left Chub Key this morning and we're on our way to West Bay on New Providence Island. It's like opposite of Nassau. And the forecast was for like five to 10 knots and we've got five. And so we're motor sailing along and you know, that's fine. The water's super flat. I guess it's because we're behind Andros Island. Check it out. Passage days when there's little wind gives us a chance to cook and relax. We arrived at West Bay around 6 p.m. and hopped in the water to cool off. Them. Me 10 years ago would be like Crazy. scooping those things up like gold. <laughs> Give me a bag! I need a bag! Today is day six of our trip in the Bahamas and we've been making our way down to the Exumas. Yesterday we went from Chub Key to uh, New Providence Island in West Bay on New Providence Island. It's the same island as Nassau but the exact opposite side and it's just a nice stop off between Chub Key and the Exumas. Today we're going from West Bay to Shroud Key, and that's the northern part of the Exumas, and it's about 15 nautical miles. We have absolutely no wind, so we're motoring. That's kind of been the standard for this trip. It's like we're motoring in our own swimming pool. It's so beautiful. No <laughs> Just more waves. Yeah, we did just 3.7 knots. Right. 3.6. Right. 15 minutes to uh, the waypoint. Nice. I'm gonna go here and then follow that. Follow this line here. And then we're gonna go to that little waypoint, North Shark Cay. So it's like still six miles or so, right? Yeah, to the waypoint is exactly uh, 1.23. 1.23. So 10 minutes will be there. Okay. There is a huge water spout that looks like it's coming right for us and there's a small one forming right behind it. We just got to North Shroud Key and it is raining cats and dogs. It's absolutely pouring. Luckily that uh, the water spout, it broke apart. It looked like just before it got to those other boats and it just started pouring. But we set anchor and I think we're in a good spot. Right? Yeah, we're fine. I'm not watering my eyes. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. 
The rain was over before we knew it, and the sun reappeared for a spectacular sunset. That's life in the tropics. All right, so we're at North Shroud K anchor. We're going to come out full on this line to this waypoint, then down south. Until we find the this waypoint here, this is the entrance to Cambridge. And then we follow this route here she seems pretty safe yeah it's got plenty of water here down there plus we can see once we get there like if yeah. there's boats yeah otherwise we go around this island here this way come around this way and hitch this to there perfect okay all right great let's do it let's do it So let's get the sails up. All right. I have to go out, like, see? That's it. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's perfect. That's where we're going to go anyways. Go fast. So you select it over there? So now we want to see the sails over there. Okay. We're going to keep the nose from the wind. 8-4. 8-4. Okay. Okay. Better. So seven seven and wind is thirteen six. It's eight seven, but six sixteen four nine sixteen five. The wind was seventeen. Okay. Now it's sixteen four eight four. Yeah, the telltales on the jib aren't flying. So do you think we probably got to put the jib out more to starboard? So my tail tails are kind of crazy here on the jib. And they look pretty good on the main. We're going up wind a little bit. So I'm going to try to trim the jib a little better. So after, yep. after trimming the jib for more upwind sailing, I brought the car in a little bit and we're going 8.7 knots on 15, 16 knots of true wind speed. And uh, the apparent wind angle, wind angle is 48 degrees. So we're pretty close to, close, to a close stack. and we want to go there i cannot get the lower bottom the bottom part of the uh, telltales in the jib to fly straight i've not been able to do that 
Yeah, I think I have to. I, I, I know I have to change the uh, attachment point. Right, right, right. To, the, to a lower point, and I always forget to do that. It's not bad, it's not terrible, but it should be better. So we've been able to go about twice the speed of the wind, not half the speed of the wind, never never the speed of the wind. Oh no, never the speed, like a we're, little more than half. Typically. Yeah, like we're doing in a dragonfly, the dragonfly was doing the speed of the wind. Well, this is a different boat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a very comfortable cruising speed. Let's look. That one, what is that one? This one here. Half together. I think it's a. Uh, I think together they have the sailing channel. Oh, they do have a sailing channel. Yeah. They're going nine knots. But again, again, yeah, you know, they have a better attack. attack. They have better attack. They're not going upwind. Yeah. Not much though. At seven nine, we're doing eight three upwind. So Winds are gusting to 22 now, so we're going to take a reef, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to take a reef because the gusts are pretty high and, you know, it doesn't add up to our speed. I mean, we're doing 8-8 eight, eight now. Okay. 16 knots of true speed. The channel to Cambridge Key was quite narrow and bordered by rocks and shoals. With the wind still gusting to 22 knots, careful attention was needed to navigate the entrance. Once inside, the waters calmed considerably, but the mooring field was packed. Boats were even anchored in the channel. Our friends Sal and Chris were there, but were moving over near Soldier Key where there was more space, so we followed them out. We ended up anchoring in a protected spot by the beach and we're looking forward to relaxing after our multi-day passage. Join us next week as we explore this beautiful area of uninhabited islands, coral reef, caves, and lazy rivers. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment down below, share it with a friend, and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.